Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to our next math lesson. Um, it's great to have you back. If this is the first time that you are joining us, I'd like to encourage you guys to join our Maths Grade 12 class. In fact, even if this isn't your first time watching us, I'd like to encourage you to do that. And having said that, I've decided that I want to show you how to do it. So, what you need to do is you're going to need to find whatever you use to get onto the internet. I use Firefox. So you're going to go onto Firefox and you're going to type in to enable, to enable.org. And when you get there, you will have a dashboard that looks very similar to this. I'm going to just make it slightly bigger so you guys can actually see it. There we go. That's better. And if you look here, you won't have this My Classrooms because this is for teachers and for me, I'm a mentor. But over here on the left hand side, you'll see it says Curriculum Learner and Teacher Resources. And what you need to do is press Choose Subject. And what you will see is all the subjects that are available on the Turn Able platform. And there are hundreds of subjects. Okay, well, not hundreds, but there are quite a lot. Lots and lots of subjects, okay? So what's cool about is that is that even though there are only math and science uh, lessons that are live at the moment, you actually do have the opportunity to go to all these others and sign up to their classes and then go through all the material that is available. But we are talking about grade 12 math at the moment. So what you do is you go and you find your grade 12 maths. So it's mathematics and you click it. And you will see that I unfortunately only have those available to me because I've already registered with the grade 12 class. OK, so what we're going to do is I'm going to randomly choose grade one. You guys would choose grade 12. OK, so I'm going to choose grade one and I'm going to enroll. OK, and it now says you're now registered in mathematics grade one. You guys would get you're now registered in mathematics grade 12. OK, and what you would see on the left hand side over here under all this is there will be a mathematics grade 12 okay and you can click on that and it'll give you some options there's all these different sections that you can go through there's mathematics all the different things number pattern sequences and series and when you go through them there will be videos to watch there'll be uh, multiple choice questions to go through etc etc so there you go but more importantly for this for what we are doing here if you look on the left hand side you will see here it says should say i don't know why mine isn't on there we go it says your dashboard can take you back to your dashboard okay then you've got upcoming events revision live assessments messaging and help okay so what you want to be looking at are these lots over here and obviously your grade 12 mathematics content. The upcoming events are what we are going to use to get to the lessons. OK, and I'll talk about that in a second, but let's just talk about live assessments. If the reason I want you guys to join the class is because it's all very well you watching the lessons, but the ideal thing for me for this would be if you guys could do a questionnaire at this end of a section. So let's say, for example, I teach you guys about finance, which I'm about to do, and then at the end of it, I set a 20 question, multiple choice, not multiple guess, questionnaire on the finance that I've taught you. You've got then two or three days to do it. It's online. So you guys can go in, you can do it, you can do this revision and then you enter it in and I don't see your name. I don't see anything about you. It is totally anonymous. But what I do get is a bunch of results that say, for example, that everybody got question five right, but maybe only 10% of the class got question three right. OK, then I go look at question three and I say, ah, OK, the kids obviously are struggling with nominal and effective interest rates. Let me go through that section again. And that's the whole point about these lessons. It's all very well me just teaching you guys everything and that. But the ideal would be for me to various issues, different sections. OK, so that is why I would like you to enroll in these classes. But anyway, more importantly as well is that if you've enrolled in the classes, then you will get upcoming events and you will get a schedule of all the lessons as they are listed. 
also what you'll get is that if you go to, for example, the last month, July, you will see all the lessons that were in your section. So for example, over here, you can see grade 12 mathematics was held on the 18th of July. And you can go and look at that lesson. Okay, you can view it. We're not gonna do it now because I wanna view it, the one we're doing at the moment so you can see it. And you can see a recording of that lesson. So if, for example, today we are doing the end of a function question and yes, you missed yesterday's lesson, then you could go down to find yesterday's lesson and you could actually go and watch yesterday's lesson or whatever and see what happened. Also, if you're watching a lesson and you miss something, you don't quite understand something, you can go and rewatch the lesson. So that's pretty cool. OK, so let's go look at upcoming events. And here we go. And here we are in today's, which is grade 12 maths online. And you would click view event. OK. And it says here two enables online school. That's just the organization that we are. Grade 12 maths. And this is the time. And don't worry about that. And if you press OK, it just goes, OK, wonderful. OK. But you're going to press open live TV link. So you press open live TV link. And there's a little bit of a delay. So what happens is, oops, sorry, wrong button. So what happens is that you guys will hear me through this screen here. No, I'm just going to show you. Okay, so this screen is going to come up and it's either going to say, well, you've got two buttons. You've got join the event or sign in as event team member. Now, you're not an event team member. Sorry, I'm an event team leader. My boss is, his whole team is, you are a guest. You're going to watch the show. So you press the green button. And what will happen is it'll come up with the lesson. It's a bit of a delay, like I said. And, and it's either going to say, well, you've got two buttons. You've got join the event or sign in as event team member. Now, you're not. Now obviously that sounds terrible because you're hearing it through my screen, through my head headset. So, but that is exactly what's happened. Now, more importantly than watching the video, actually not as importantly as watching the video, is that you'll see there's a green button here that says Message Studio. And if you click there, you can message me. You can message me about this lesson. You can message me about anything you want that you want to go through. So a couple of weeks ago, one of my students messaged me and said, I'm really struggling with circle geometry. So we had a whole bunch of lessons on circle geometry. And that's the idea behind it, is that you guys can message me. You can tell me sections that you're struggling on. If you've got certain exam paper questions that you're struggling on, then you can message it into the studio and we can address it. OK, so that is the idea behind, the main idea behind these lessons. Now, having settled that, I'm now going to get back to my lesson. So yesterday we were doing exam examples of functions and we got as far as doing this one. OK, so we worked out the equation for the inverse of the Y. OK, then we worked out the domain of the inverse, because remember it was the same as the range of the actual function. Since the range was y is an element of r, y is greater than zero, the domain of the inverse was going to be the opposite of that, which was going to be x is an element of real values for x is greater than zero. We calculate the values of x if 4 times f of x plus 1 is equal to root 2. We did it over here. We determined the range of g OK, which was this G, uh, which is the blue graph. Sorry, I just had a mental break and I couldn't remember what we were doing, which is the funny blue graph, which was the range of that, which was basically the Y is an element of real values for Y does not equal one. And then finally, we stopped here and I said, let's carry on with this today. OK, but I did say to you that if you were in the lesson yesterday to maybe take a screenshot of this or just pause it on your screen or whatever and see if you can't do this question as homework in inverted commas. OK, it says if HX plus three is the equation of one of the axes of symmetry of the G, determine the coordinates of B. OK, it's actually a really easy question because normally what happens is if this graph was not moved over, 
sorry, by the way, so just getting back to having joined the classes, if then you came into today's lesson and you'd really like to have gone through this, this question, you can actually then go back to yesterday's lesson, find it, and then this is the last question we did. So then you can go and click on it and watch the video. And also another thing that is really good to do, just very briefly, is if you rewatch, you can watch now the way we do it. And then what to, is really good to do is to rewatch the video, but then to pause the video at the beginning of the question, and then try and do that question for yourselves, because usually that is the best way for you to learn. Okay, now let's carry on. It says, if a of x is x plus 3 is the equation of one of the axes of the symmetry of g, determine the coordinates of b. So they want the coordinates of b this year. Okay, so normally, if your, if your hyperbola is not shifted, okay, then the axis of symmetry would be y is equal to x for a positive hyperbola. Okay, so normally it would be going straight up parallel, I mean y equal x, okay. What's happened now is they're telling us that one of the axes of symmetry happens to be y equals x plus 3, which means this is going up, down over here. Okay, right. But do you agree that we know, so now it's y equals x plus 3, but we know what the y value is at this point because we have been told, well, we worked out earlier that this was the asymptote y equals 1. Okay, so if that's the case, we just need to really work out what the x value is there. So we can substitute y equal to 1 into this. So therefore, we can say 1 is equal to x plus 3, Therefore, x is equal to 1 minus 3, so therefore x is equal to minus 2. So therefore, we're saying that this asymptote is actually minus 2, and b is the point minus 2, 1. x is minus 2, y is 1. There you go, so that wasn't so bad. Hey, then it says, hence determine the equation of g. Okay, so we kind of have done that already, but let's just go through it. We've got g of x. Well, we haven't finished it, have we? Okay, so let me just erase all ink. So then we know that this is minus 2, 1, that point there, right? So we know that g of x is equal to a over x plus p plus q. Remember that p changes the sign, but q doesn't. So it becomes a over x plus 2, plus 1. And now all we have to do is establish what the A is, what A is. So what do we need to do? We need to find a value that works. And do you see the G goes through the 0, 0 point? Isn't that nice? The G goes through the 0, 0 point. So when X is 0, Y is 0 as well. So we can substitute that in. So we can say 0 is equal to a over 0 plus 2 plus 1. Then if we've got minus 1 is equal to a over 2, and therefore we can say that a is going to equal to minus 2. And then you need to think about it if that makes sense, and it does because this is the negative quadrant and that's also the negative quadrant, what would be if it wasn't shifted. So therefore we can say that, that makes sense. So our general formula, my general equation for g is minus 2 over x plus 2 plus 1. Yay! Okay, so now we've done that question. Right, let's move on to the next, next section. I'm actually going to now move on to finance, I think. Oh no, sorry, one more question. I thought, it was, I, thought I was finished, sorry. Then it says, for which values of G is of, okay, this is talking about differentiation again. So we're not going to do that question. We will do it later when we actually follow differentiation. Let's talk about finance. So now grade 12s, I'm going to, I know that you guys have done a finance all the way from grade 10, but I do find that a lot of grade 10s and grade 12s, they just hit you with your sinking funds and your annuities and everything else. And some of you may have struggled with simple interest and compound interest through the years. So, and there are questions in the final exams on simple interest and compound interest. So I decided that I'm going to revise simple interest and compound interest with you guys as well. 
to make sure that you can at least get those marks, and I don't mean that in a rude way, I just mean as in sometimes we leave finance, because finance can be a bit tricky to read um, those questions, because so sometimes we leave finance to the last, okay? And the first question of the finance section is usually either a, a decent, a fairly decent um, simple interest or compound interest question, and then they go on to the horrible annuities and timelines and things like that. So let's make sure you guys can get those marks with ease so you don't even have to struggle with it and then you can move on to the more tricky or more complicated finance questions okay so simple interest basically the simple interest formula which is on your formula sheet is a is equal to p times one plus i n where a is the amount of money you get out at the end p is your principal now principal is not the dude in charge or do debt who is in charge of your um, school, this principle is actually the amount you invest, you invest or loan, okay, that's basically the starting amount, okay, I is your interest and it's always in a decimal form and N for you guys at the moment is number of years, okay, we will get to a more complicated version of simple interest and compound interest where it's not just the number of years, but at the moment for this part of the lesson is the number of years. So a basic example, John invests 45,000 Rand for five years. Adams Bank offers a savings account with a simple interest of 13.5% per annum. What would John's new balance be after five years? Okay, so we know that A is equal to P1 plus IN. Okay, A is equal to P1 plus IN. They're telling us <coughs> that, and the best thing to do with any of these questions, whether you're doing this easy questions or the trickier questions, is, and I just want to check something. Yeah, okay. Um, the easier questions or the trickier questions is that you always, always, always write down all the information. So our principal is 45,000. Okay, and quite candidly, sorry, just to get back to this, I would always write down the information I'm given and then have a look at the equations because sometimes it's not that easy to work out which equation you're going to be using until you've looked at the information you have and then realize what you want and how you can get it. Okay, so always, always, whether the question be easy or difficult, write down the equations that you, the information. So P is your principal, which is 45,000. N is the number of years, which is five, and we're happy with that because the interest is per annum. If this was per month, then obviously we'd have to multiply this by 12 to get to the number of months, okay? Your I is 13,5%, okay? But this needs to be over 100, okay? But we'll work on that in a minute. And they want to know what is the new amount, Okay, so this is 13,5%, but we need to convert that into a decimal. When we say a decimal, we mean that we go to go 13,5 over 100 because this is 13,5%. And we want the, I know that you're saying, oh, but this has got a decimal in it. What I mean is we want it as a fraction out of 100. We don't want it as a percent. So that becomes 0,135. Okay, so now we can substitute it into our formula. We've got 45,000 times by 1 plus I, which is 0, 0,135 times by N, which is 5. Okay, so now we're going to use our calculators and we're going to go 1 plus 0, 0.3135, uh, 1 plus 0.135 times 5 and that becomes 5 so you get 45,000 times 5 comma 675 and then we're going to multiply that with 45,000 and that gives you 25,5375 guys I know that I usually show you the calculator moves on the um, laptop, for some reason, my calculator won't come up today, so I'm just going to be using my own calculator. Um, 
but for the more complicated, I'll do more complicated examples. I'll finance again with you guys tomorrow, obviously, because we have to do a whole bunch of exam paper type questions. And I'll make sure that my program is working. So I apologize for this. So what were we saying? We're saying that after five years, John's balance is going to be 255,375 Rand. OK, now let's talk compound interest compound interest. Okay, so compound interest is interest that is added every time you, um, every period, okay? So your formula equal to A is equal to P, 1 plus I to the power of N. So let me just explain what the difference is. The difference between simple and compound interest is, let's say for example, I say to you that I'm going to loan you 100 Rand, but I'm going to charge you 20% yeah, 20% interest per year, okay? Simple interest, simple interest. Okay, in fact, let me just go back so I can write this out. So 20% simple interest, okay? So, and we're going to do it for, say, five years. So what happens then is you would owe me, you'd go 100 Rand. Now, 20% of 100 Rand is 20 Rand, right? So then after year one, you would owe me 100 Rand plus 20 Rand. This is at the end of year one. At the end of year two, you'd owe me just another 20 Rand. At the end of year three, you'd end, owe me an... At the end of year three, you would owe me another 20 rand you get the gist okay so if you just keep adding the interest the same interest every time so let's make that three years because i'm bored so that means that at the end of three years you would owe me 160 rand okay that is it compound interest is different let's say that compound interest i've said to you okay i'm going to lower you 100 rand but it's going to be um to sound i don't know why the pen's done that one minute. There we go. Um, it's going to be 10%, okay, per annum compounded, okay? And again, let's make it three years. Okay, so what will be is that the first year, at the end of the first year, you will owe me 110 Rand, okay? But then at the end of that year, you owe me 10% interest on this. So for year two, you have to add another 11 rand, okay? Because it's 10% of the original plus the interest. So that becomes then 121, okay? So that is year two. Then at the end of year two, you owe me now another 10%, but on this is on this. So you're adding the interest in every time. So now I owe you 12 rand, 10 cents interest. So that becomes a hundred and what is that? 133 rand, 10 cents. Whoopsie. 133 rand and yes, 10 cents. Okay, so that's year three. So it doesn't seem like a big deal, but notice that yeah, just twenty percent interest, and yeah, it was three years at ten percent per annum compounded. Now all banks, in fact, I don't know anybody. Only maybe your mummy or your daddy when they loan you some money, why well, I'm charging simple interest, okay? But the rest of the world uses compound interest, okay? But we still need to know the difference. So instead of us writing this out, because let's get real, we don't have time enough time in the world to do this type of calculation. So instead, what happens is we get a formula which is on your formula sheet, which says that A is equal to P, 1 plus I to the N, where A is the amount at the end, okay? P is the principal, that's either the money you loaned or the money you invested. I is the interest in decimal form, or like I said, as a fraction out of 100, but in decimal form. And N is the number of years or number of payment periods. Think of it that way. So again, this time we've got John is again investing 45,000 for five years. So we've got A is equal to P, one plus I all to the power of N, okay? Again, I stress it every time, P is 45,000, write down your variables. Okay, N is five years and you check that this compound interest per annum, so we don't have to mess with that at all. It's fine, that's also years. Your I is going to be 13,5 
over 100, which is 0.135. So now we can substitute into this because they want to know what is John's savings balance after that. So this time it's 45,000, 1 plus I, 0.135, all to the power of 5. Ooh, all to the power of 5. So let's do that. It becomes 45,000. And that's 1 comma 135 to the power of 5. Okay, so we go 1.135 to the power of 5. And then we multiply it with 45,000. And that gives you, hmm, 84760. Okay, comma 17. And there you go. Okay, so do you understand the difference now between compound interest and simple interest? Right, now let's talk about I and N because they're related. So far we've been talking about the fact that we've been compounding things per year. So therefore N was, or even just adding the interest per year. So therefore your N was always just in years and interest was just the normal, okay? So if you have an example of 13.7 years for two years, then do you agree if it's compounded annually, your I is just 0, 137 because it's 13.7 divided by 2 and your N is 2. Okay, nice and easy. It's just like what we've just been doing. But what happens if we compounded monthly? If we compounded monthly, we now need to change our N to 2 times 12 because it's 2 years. Compounded monthly is going to be 24 payments, right? But we also have to take our interest and divide it by 12. Okay, you have to take your interest and divide it by 12. Or if we're compounded quarterly, quarterly means four times a year, which means you have to divide by four. So this is because quarterly is the same as four times a year. So that's going to be two years times by four, which is eight. Or we take the compound, the interest and divide by four. Or if it's compounded daily, we can take the interest and divide by 365. And we'll take the number of payments, which is two years times by 365, and that's E730. And I know that there's some people out there going to go, oh, but the 365 and a quarter days. Okay, no, we're not worrying about the quarter. We're talking just about full days. Okay, so it's 365. Semi-annually means twice a year. Okay, semi-annually means twice a year. So we're going to take the interest and divide by two, or, and we take N, which is two years, times by the twice a year, which gives you four. Okay, so you really need to know how to get these I's and N's right, because it's obviously going to make a huge difference in actually working out your sums. Okay. In fact, this is where most people struggle, where most people fail to get the sum correct. So please make sure you understand this. So let's look at an example. We've got 50,000 Rand, okay, P is 50,000 Rand, and it is invest 50,000 years. Invested in a bond market for seven years. N equals seven at the moment, it's years. Calculate the amount that can be withdrawn if the interest rate is 10.5%, the I is 10,5%. By the way, this is years. If it's compounded quarterly, quarterly. So do you agree we're going to say quarterly means that it's done it four times. So you're going to have to take the seven and times it by four. We have to take this 10.5 and convert it to a decimal. So that becomes 10,5 divided by 100 is equal to 0, 0,105, and then we have to divide it by 4, okay? And then we just substitute it into our equation. We go A is equal to P, 1 plus I, all to the power of N. So we've got the principal is 50,000, 1 plus, and this is 0, 0,105 all over 4, all to the power of 7 times 4 is 28, so that's 28. Okay, and now we need to do this on our calculators. So what I would suggest you guys do is do the bracket first. So we're going to go 0, 0.105 divided by 4 equals, so this becomes 50 
and I'm doing this slowly because I want to make sure that if you guys are following on your calculator, you get this right. 1 plus 0, 0, 0.2625 all to the power of 28. I'm now going to add 1 to it and take it to the power of 5. So I'm going to, I mean 28. So I'm going to add 1 and take it to the power of 28. So I get 50,000 multiplied by 2, 0, 6, 5, 8, da, 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 da. And I multiply that 50,000 and I get, sure, I get R 103290.12. Okay, which is 103,212 cents. Okay, and what I'd like to say to you guys is please don't round off during your sum. I'm only writing these out like this because I want to make sure that you guys normally, like I said, normally I do this on a calculator on the screen, but for some reason that pop-up just won't pop up. So um, I will go through the more complicated questions tomorrow with the calculator to make sure you can see. But in the meantime, I'm just writing these numbers down so that if you're doing this on your calculator with you, you can see if you're getting this similar type of number. If you are, then you're getting it right. Okay, moving on. Simple depreciation. So depreciation is actually the inverse of appreciation and appreciation is basically what we do when we invest something okay so simple depreciation is basically when we lose value um okay it's also known as straight line depreciation so if they say i bought a car and it depreciated on a straight line basis they mean simple depreciation so depreciation is when an asset loses value over a period of time and every asset okay not every asset some Okay, how is this game generally? Okay, but let's say, for example, a car. The minute you drive the car off the car lot, okay, it loses value. And that and everything else, your computers, your, um, your laptops, which are computers, your cell phones, your um, just about everything, your fridges, they all lose value over time. Um, there are one or two exceptions like property, but most of them depreciate. So simple interest formula is exactly the same as the simple interest formula when we are trying to work out a gain, except that now instead of a plus, we write a minus. And the values are still the same. A is the amount, P is the principal, I is the interest in decimal form, and N is the number of period payments. So for example, a small business buys a photocopy for 9,000 Rand. So this time, the principal is the amount you start with, the amount that was invested into that photocopier. So that is 9,000 Rand. Okay, the owner needs to know how much you will be able to sell it for after four years. So the N is four years, unless we have something else. He knows it will depreciate at 7% per interest. So the I is 7%, which is going to be changed to 0,07 because we divide by 100. And it's per annum, so that four stays the same. So it says, how much would he be able to sell it for? So he goes, A is equal to P, 1 minus IN. Okay, so the principle is 9,000, 1 minus 0, 0,07 multiplied with 4. So we pop that in the calculator. So I'm going to go 0 0.07 times 4, and that gives me 0 0.28. So I've got 9,000 times by 1 minus 0 0.28. And again, grade 12s, you don't have to show all these steps. I'm just doing it because I want to show you guys what your answer should look like along the way. So that becomes 0 0.72, and if I multiply that by 9,000, I get 6,480. So he should, unless he's messed up his photocopier a lot, he should be able to sell his photocopier for 6,480 rand four years ago, which is not too bad. Okay. Now let's talk compound depreciation, exactly the same principle. Um, it's known also as the reducing balance depreciation. So again, they might say to you that it has depreciation on a reducing balance um, scale. So it says compound deep 
compound depreciation formula is exactly the same as the compound interest formula, except that it's got a minus instead of a plus, with A is amount, P is principal, I is interest, and N is the number of pairing periods. So again, we've got a business. And this time the photocopier costs 180,000. This is a serious photocopier. This thing, yeah, can photocopy money. Okay, no, not really, but it's a lot of money for a photocopier. It depreciates at 5.7%, okay, depreciation on a reducing balance. So therefore we know it's compounded. So we know we're going to go A is equal to P, one minus I, all to the power of N. And it says it's for four years. Okay, so that's going to be changed to 0, 0,57 because I've divided that by 100. And N is going to be four. And it says, what is the value, value of the photocopier? So we've got 180, 1, 2, 3, 1 minus 0, 0, 0,57, all to the power of four. So again, on my calculator, I'm going to go 1 minus... Not, let's try again, not point not 0.057 to the power of 4 and I get 180,000 multiplied by 0, 0.79076 dot 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 dot. Okay, I'm just not writing the rest out. And then you multiply that by 180, 1, 2, 3, and you get are 142337,48, which looks right because that's approximately 80% of it, okay? So there you go. You Now this photocopier, you'll notice has lost 40,000 Rand of its value, approximately 40,000 Rand of its value, whereas this, calculate, uh, this photocopier only lost about 2,500 Rand's worth of its value. Okay, so there we go. Right, now we need to talk about timelines because timelines are very important because they help us visualize multiple changes. And in real life, there are multiple changes, okay? The banks change the interest rates um, all the time. You might take out some money from your savings account. You might get a bonus from your boss and put more money into the savings account, except your auntie Edna might decide to donate 3,000 Rand to your cause of going overseas, whatever. So there's always different types of changes, okay? So they could be deposits, they could be withdrawals, they could be changes in interest rate. So let's have a look at this. And the best thing you can do is first we're going to read through it slowly, then we're going to draw a number line and we're going to put all the values in the number line and then we're going to work it out, okay? So it says 5,700 Rand is deposited into a savings account. Two years later, another 1,900 Rand is added to the savings. The interest rate for the first three years is 13% per annum, compounded quarterly. Then it is decreased to 11.2% per annum, compounded monthly. Calculate how much money is accumulated in the savings account at the end of the five years. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, so we've got things change at two years and uh, three years, and that's it. Okay, so we only have to worry about two years and at three years. Okay, isn't that cool? So 5,000 Rand is deposited during this period, and during this period, and two years later, another 1,900 Rand is added. Another 1,900 Rand. The interest rate for the first three years, the interest rate for the first three years is 13% per annum compounded quarterly, okay? And then for the next two years, the next two years, because it's after five years, okay, it is decreased to 11.2%, but it is compounded monthly, okay? And it says, how much money do we have? So do you agree we've actually got how many bits that we have to worry about? We've got this bit here, which is this amount at that interest rate. We've got this bit here, which is this plus that amount at that interest rate. And then we've got this bit here, which is at 
the same amount, this whole big amount, at the new interest rate. Okay, so let's call this section one, this section two, and this section three. So we're going to work out our information for each of the different sections. Okay, so let's do section one up here. Do you agree that my principal is 5,700 Rand? Okay, my interest is 13% per annum compounded quarterly. So it's going to be 0, 0,13 divided by four because it compounded quarterly. This happened for the first two years before I add money in. I add money in two years later, okay? So N is going to be two years times by four, okay? So what happens then is we're going to get out the A for this, okay? And that is going to be my principal for this bit here plus the 1,900 Rand, okay? So let's work out this first. So we've got A is equal to P. 1 plus i all to the power of n. The principal is 5,700. 1 plus i is 0, 0,13 over 4. Why? Because it's 13%. Where is it? 13% per annum. So it's got to be 13 divided by 100 is 0, 0,13. Right? But it's compounded quarterly, which means I have to divide it by 4. And then the number of payments is 2 years times by the 4 for the quarterly, so it's 8. So let's pop that into our calculators. So it's 0.13 divided by 4 plus 1 all to the power of 8 multiplied by 5,700. And that becomes 7,361.99. Okay, so that's the amount of money I'm getting out here is 7,361 Rand and 99 cents. I now need to add this to the 1,900 Rand to work out my new principal for the next year. Okay, do you understand that? So my principal here is going to be 7,361. This is for section two. It's the amount of money I've got out after the two years plus the 1,900 Rand I'm now adding. Okay, so it's 736199 plus my 1,900 plus my 1,900, which is going to be equal to 9261,99. Okay, my I is still 13%, 0,13 divided by 4. And my N, though, is only one year compounded quarterly, so it's one times four, okay? So therefore, we can now work out, and I'm gonna do it in a different color just so that we don't get confused. So we've got A is equal to my new principal of 926199 times by one plus 0, 0,134, 1, 3 over four, all to the power of four, so we do that on our calculators. We go 1 plus 0 0.1, 0 0.13 divided by 4 plus 1 all to the power of 4 multiplied by 9261.99. And that comes to, now we've got our 10,526 rand and 3 cents. And that's how much we have over here now. Okay, that's what we have at the beginning of the third year. Now, now at the beginning of third year, we now have a new interest rate. We've, our principal is now 10,526 Rand and three cents. That's how much we've saved so far. Our interest rate now is 11.2% per annum. So, sorry, our interest rate now is 11.2%, which is not comma. 112, but it's compounded monthly, so I have to divide by 12. And N is the number of months, which is going to be 12 times by the period. And this period here is two years times by two. 
In grade 12, I've just run out of time. So what I'd like to suggest again is that you do this last little bit or you can just wait for tomorrow and then we'll carry on with this lesson tomorrow. And then we're going to move on, obviously, after this to the grade 12 stuff where we talk about annuities and sinking funds, etc., etc. Have a great evening.